Now we're going to consider systems of implicit functions. So before we had multivariable functions, but we only had one of them for a constraint and we had a level set, but now we're going to consider functions which satisfy a system of equations. So consider the system of functions and constraints given by f1 x y z so we'll just consider simple nonlinear constraints at this point is x squared plus y squared plus z squared and how about f2 of x y z is equal to say two-thirds x squared plus two-thirds y squared plus z and our constraints so so this now does not have a square and that's on purpose our constraints are f1 x y z is equal to one so we live on a sphere and f2 of x y z is equal to one and this is going to look like essentially a, a paraboloid in in that space and this is a system of two constraints so so we have two constraints and three variables so in principle we should be able to solve this this system with a single free variable that is I have 3 minus 2 equals 1 That is, there should be exactly one degree of freedom in this three-dimensional space of x, y, z, so that I can do this. Uh, and so that means that uh, I want to suppose now that y equals y of x and z equals z of x solve f1 of x y of x z of x is equal to 1 so the first constraint and f2 of x y of x z of x is equal to 1 so I satisfy both of those and y of square root 6 over 4 is equal to square root 6 over 4. So if I plug in the point x, I get uh, square root 6 over 4 for y, and z at square root 6 over 4 is equal to 1, one half. And you can see that the corresponding square root 6 over 4 square root 6 over 4, 1 half, uh, satisfies the constraints. So this is in fact a point satisfying the constraints. And now it's not really a level set, but it's, it's something like a level set. It's like an intersection of two level sets. So uh, that's great. And if you know, these things should, in general, be differentiable. And if uh, they are differentiable at this point, square root 6 over 4, square root 6 over 4, 1 half, uh, then we 
should be able to take derivatives of the implicit functions and figure it out, figure out what these derivatives are. Well, we've got 0 is equal to partial with respect to x of 1 equals partial with respect to x f at x, y of x, z of x. And again, if we use the chain rule, this is just going to be d f dx 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 plus df dy dy dx plus df dz dz dx and so since these are all one dimensional we have that this will be at that point at that point we're going to get well uh, this is uh, the first the first function of course the first constraint function the first implicit function df1 there should be little subscripts of one everywhere well df1 dx of course was uh, 2x so this is 2x plus now 2y of x and dy dx is going to be y prime of x plus df dz is going to be 2z of x and then I have z prime of x and when I evaluate this at the point square root 6 over 4 I plug that in I'll get that 0 is equal to 2 times square root 6 over 4 plus 2 times y of square root 6 over 4 y prime of square root 6 over 4 plus 2z of square root 6 over 4 and then z prime of square root 6 over 4 And ultimately, that boils down to an equation square root 6 over 2 plus, because we know these values, we've fixed them beforehand, uh, square root 6 over 2 y prime of, this is my only unknown, I want to know these derivatives, I don't know them yet, plus z prime of square root 6 over 4. And so I have a linear equation uh, where my unknowns are y prime at this point and z prime at this point. Well, I can get another linear equation by differentiating the other implicit constraint with respect to x. So again, that's equal to that, and then I have now df2 dx 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 plus df2 dy dy dx plus d f to d z d z d x and uh, if I actually plug in things here now I'll get that this is going to be four thirds x plus four thirds y of x y prime of x plus z prime of x and if we evaluate now at x is equal to square root 6 over 4, we then obtain 0 is equal to square root 6 over 3 plus square root 6 over 3 y prime of square root 6 over 4 plus z prime of square root 6 over 4. So differentiating both of the implicit functions gives me two linear equations in terms of y prime and z prime at that particular point. And what do I do when I have two system two uh, two unknowns and two equations? 
Well, I solved that system. So we have the linear system. So we have the linear system, square root 6 over 2, y prime, and I'll suppress the argument at this point, plus z prime is equal to negative square root 6 over 2. I have square root 6 over 3, y prime, plus z prime. Of course, this is all at square root 6 over 4, but we're suppressing the argument. Or, if we were thinking about this in terms of symbols, right, so we've, we've been doing all this madness, but there was actually some symbolics that we could just represent everything in. We had df1 dy df1 dz df2 dy df2 dz multiplied by dy dx dz dx should be equal to negative df1 dx df2 dx and we wanted to solve for dy dx and dz dx at that particular point so of course you can solve this equation i'm not going to i'm not going to bore you with the details of what that solution actually is but uh, quickly solve this for your own purposes you can do it really quickly but note this was only possible if i could actually solve the system so uh, we could only solve this if of course the determinant of this guy df1 right dy df1 dz df2 dy df2 dz did not vanish right otherwise we might have a problem here right if this determinant does not vanish then of course we can invert this matrix and we can compute that number that's great that is actually a very powerful generalization of the fact that I didn't want my gradient to vanish in order to actually invert something so theorem now that we've derived this and shown that we can actually figure out uh, derivatives for systems of implicit functions uh, well we're going to let f1 up to fm be functions from r m plus n into r1 uh, and we're going to let them be c1 functions uh, and consider a system of constraints or equations f sub i of y1 up to ym x1 up to xn is equal to ci for i equals 1 up to m so I've got m constraints so in particular I've got m constraints and I've got m plus n unknowns so I should be able to solve this system in terms of n free variables well if the determinant if the determinant df1 dy1 up to df1 dym dfm dy1 dot 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 dfm dym and i'm going to write a little shorthand for that i'm going to say this thing is the same as partial of the list of functions up to fm over partial y1 up to ym. If that determinant does not vanish at that particular point, at a particular point, y star 
x star, then there are c1 functions that I get by setting yi equal to gi of x1 up to xn for i equals 1 up to m defined so these are all well defined around my point x star such that And of course, uh, you know, we assume that uh, y star and x star actually solve this system of equations, right? Otherwise, we're talking crazy talk. Such that, well, uh, huh. okay, such that fi g1 of x up to gm of x uh, x equals ci for i equals 1 up to m and yi star equals fi so I I solve the system and I actually equal that point at the at the point that I've specified for i equals 1 up to m and so I have a system of implicit functions that solves all the constraints as long as I have that this determinant doesn't vanish and this is re remember if you remember our linear implicit function theorem this is exactly that same condition for saying that the y1 up to ym are going to be the endogenous variables for a particular set of exogenous variables x.